the qualitative difference between, say, Grace Jones's Slave to the Rhythm, but the 12-inch hot-blooded version, and the... I was nailing that. These are the ELAC Unify floor standards, and this is a pair of my socks, and you might wonder what the socks have to do with the speakers. The thing is, this room is six meters by five meters. It's not enormous. I get too much bass output from these loudspeakers in their standard configuration. So I use a sock and stuff it into the back of one of the rear ports at the very bottom, just to tame the bass response to bring it back to better fit my room. So remember this because we're coming back to it. Elac socks. So remember the MyTech Brooklyn DAC and the DAC Plus? This is the DAC Plus version. It's a very powerful headphone amplifier and DAC and phono stage, MM and MC, preamp with options for analog and digital volume control. Well, now I'm using something slightly different called the Brooklyn Bridge, and that's here, and it's paired with the Brooklyn Amp. So here we see the two together, the new Brooklyn Bridge, the older Brooklyn DAC Plus on the bottom. You can buy either in black or silver finishes. If I flip it around to the back, that's where the differences become more obvious. So these two devices are essentially the same DAC, the same headphone amplification stage, same phono stage, same preamp, same volume control, same everything apart from a little bit of connectivity differences on the back. But the main difference is the Brooklyn Bridge as the name suggests, bridge, this connects to your network. It has a streaming board inside. So it's a streaming DAC. So the streaming board inside the MyTech Brooklyn Bridge comes from a company called Converse Digital, and we use their M-Control app to interface with it. So this connects over the network. I'm using Wi-Fi at the moment. You can use Ethernet, your choice. And you can see we have support for the big two, Tidal and Corbas. There's also Deezer here. They also offer a lossless service. One of my favorites is Spotify. If we click that, it launches the app. I'm playing some prints, devices available, and you can see the MyTech Brooklyn Bridge is right there. If I go back to the M-Control app, I can also stream from Dropbox and OneDrive. I don't use that so much. I can stream directly from any music stored inside this phone. This is an LG V30. I can access my music folder here, which is this. This is actually the micro SD card inserted inside the phone. But my favorite way to interface with the Brooklyn Bridge is using Rune. So I come out of there, fire up Rune, make sure I've got the zone, and there's my Brooklyn Bridge right there. And then go back here, and you can see I'm playing some Pixies. Play, and this is how I listen to the Brooklyn Bridge, using Rune. Really super simple. Let's get one thing out of the way early on. I could not audibly separate the new Brooklyn Bridge from the old Brooklyn DAC Plus 
fed by an ultra rendu over usb so these sound you know pretty much the same i really can't see a case for existing brooklyn owners upgrading to the brooklyn bridge unless box count or minimizing box count is a concern for you. So if you're the kind of audiophile who likes to play around with things, tinker with cables, power supplies, the Brooklyn DAC Plus with an external streamer is the solution for you. But if you're looking for a simple set and forget box where everything is built in, you just plug it in, power it on, connect to your network, fire up Rune or Spotify Connect or Kobo as a title, the Brooklyn Bridge is for you. So the Brooklyn Bridge is for minimalists. So minimalism is exactly why I've paired the bridge with the Brooklyn amp. You can see it's a little bit, just a tiny bit deeper than the DAC. On the back, binding posts, balanced inputs, single-ended inputs. And from this Brooklyn amp, we get a whopping 250 watts per channel of class D amplification. And that's into eight ohms. For the four ohm impedance speakers behind me, we get 300 watts per channel. That's a nominal impedance, and that still speaks to the amount of power that the speakers behind me see from this amp. So I'm using the Brooklyn Bridge and the Brooklyn Amp together as a very compact system here in my Calax unit, so that makes it Calax Phi. A lot like the name Unity Atom, which is also like a very compact streaming amplifier system. This does not have a phono stage. Its headphone output is a little bit weaker. Actually, it's quite a lot weaker than the, the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, it has a nice volume wheel here, and it has a display screen here. I've reviewed this before. I'll put a link up here somewhere for you to click. But crucially, this has 60 watts per channel of class A, B amplification. Now, we gotta be careful here because amplification isn't just about power ratings, it's also about current delivery. And that's hard to know between these two, but nominally, the MyTech solution is a lot more powerful than the name. So my focus here is to compare two different Calax Phi systems, two very compact systems. I've got the MyTech Brooklyn Bridge and Brooklyn Amp over here, the name Unity Atom in the Calax unit behind me here. So all I really have to do is just move the cables, the speaker cables around behind me. And I've been doing that for the last week or so to compare them functionally and sonically. But we'll start with some functional differences as to why you might buy one rather than the other. So you buy the name because you want Bluetooth or AirPlay, or one of my favorites is using SoundCloud via Chromecast. This thing has Chromecast support, but perhaps the biggest reason to buy the name is this uber tactile, ultra smooth and enormous volume control. It's amazing. But you buy the MyTech because you want, it's very capable phono stage, you want USB, you want MQA support, you want a very, very powerful and very clean sounding headphone output, which the, the name doesn't have. And here with the Brooklyn Bridge, I can easily power the Sennheiser HD 800S headphones and they, they produce a very clean sound. And really this word clean keeps coming up again and again when I listen to the Brooklyn Bridge and Amp combo through these speakers. So the MyTech combo is probably the the most audio file sounding of the two. By that I mean it better reveals the differences between recording quality and master quality. It's more straight laced. It's more like a direct hit of black coffee whereas maybe the name is perhaps more colored. So a bit more like a coffee with milk. So between the fantastic sounding 12 inch hot blooded version of Grace Jones's Slave to the Rhythm and the piss weak mastering that we hear on U2's Zeropa. And also between the excellent sounding Open House by Lou Reed and John Cale, 
compared to again the piss weak sounding Romeo and Juliet on Lou Reed's New York. With the MyTech, these differences are much more starkly exposed than with the name. But to try and say which one is better is just, it's a bit laughable really, because it, you might be a detail freak, you might really want to hear those differences, or you might not, and in which case you want the name. So perhaps the biggest difference is when I'm using the name to power the Elacs, I need the socks in the ports. And with the Brooklyn Amp, I don't. The Brooklyn Amp has greater low end control. It probably has a higher damping factor than the name. And it really, it just means that the bass is not as loose and as flabby and therefore doesn't seem to, seem to, doesn't seem to overload this room quite as much as with the name. So you buy the Brooklyn Bridge and Amp because maybe you want better low end control than another amp might give you. So this MyTech pairing gives us superb detail retrieval, both through loudspeakers and through high-end headphones. It puts the entire system inside a Kallax unit. It doesn't call for an external phono stage. The turntable can sit on the top and everything is extremely tidy. It's non-intrusive and that's not gonna take over your life or your lounge room. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up just here. Um, if you like my attitude towards high-end audio, if you like the fact that I'm not a grumpy old man telling you that what you're doing is inferior or wrong, if you like the fact that I just have a live and let live approach to audio, please subscribe to this channel. Is it there? Is it there? I don't know. But anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching.